So, good afternoon everyone, and welcome to this first post-race commentary I will be doing for Season 10 of GT. So, my name is Buma, I'm your admin for the in the Discord and for predominantly the, the F1 section of, uh, of AOR. Um, but yeah, I had some experience in GT before, on previous games, on this game, and for this season, I heard about the possibility to do uh, post-race commentary on one of the GT tiers. Um, and I, yeah, I kind of took that over because uh, yeah, there are some benefits from doing this. Uh, I don't have to be there every Monday night. Uh, I don't fill up a place in the lobby. Um, so this is kind of cool, but also kind of new for me. So forgive me uh, if I yeah, do things wrong or have my sound not probably registered because I was really struggling with the sound. But I think I will be, I, people, I think people will be able to hear me. And otherwise, this is just a test, the sprint race, and then we will see afterwards. Um, but yes, welcome. We have already arrived at season 10 of GT. Uh, and for me, I will commentate you through this season of, I think, eight weeks? Yes, eight weeks. Uh, of GT started two days ago on Monday, the 31st of July, at the beautiful Interlagos, as you can see. And we will end in eight weeks on Mount Panorama on the 18th of September. So, that's all what we're gonna, gonna do. I'm not planning to do a super, super long introduction every time. Uh, but I wanted to make myself a little bit familiar with the drivers, um, which I see some known names, but maybe there are some unknown names. Um, let me see. Um, so, yeah, let's go through the grid, I think, <laughs> um, to see who is all in this tier 4 that you will be seeing this uh, the upcoming weeks. So we start on P1 with Barry, with a very, very, very famous, a very famous and cool name. But I will call him Perry for the majority of the time. I think um, I don't have really much car knowledge, but that is the Mazda. I think um, maybe I can find some teams. I think I I saw teams, or at least the cars people have got him but i go first to the grid it's Perry on the front row in pole position together with jamie uh very much know jamie from his f1 adventures uh, then on the second row i think his real name is dominique and if it's not then i would like to know because i'm gonna call him dominique until he says i should not <laughs> so uh, then in p4 we have reno kin my lovely fellow co-admin who I'm glad to see in this tier. Uh, I didn't know he dropped off that much pace. Sorry. I can remember him being in tier 1 and this is tier 4, but yeah. <laughs> Maybe that was the previous game, I don't know. Um, he's been followed on the grid by Ben, who's in the same car as Jamie, so I think he would be the teammate of Jamie. So that would be B.O., I think. I, I, surely I have, to, I have to see gamer tags, right? I'm not sure anymore. In P6, we have Zach, then GMS play, Stefan, I think I will call him. He has some kind of a German livery, it looks like. Um, in 9th key 10, just all these guys are just GT drivers, so I don't really know a lot about them uh, yet. But in 10th, we have Pyro, one of our best and lovely commentators, especially for the F1 tiers. Glad to see him here. Uh, in 11th, Orak, Hapax in 12th, Jezza like you, which I will call Jezza, I think, in 13th, uh, Samurai's in 14th, Kix in 15th, and we close off the grid with OG Moose King, who is also in the Sprint League I drove yesterday, so I kind of know him a bit. Um, so, yeah, I think it's best to start. I, I saw some teams, I saw that, like... Jezza and Zach are in the Mercedes, Pyron Hapax too, but in the 16, uh, Stefan and Moose King in the BMW, Perry and Oric in the Mazda, I think Ben then and Jamie in the Lexus, uh, Dominic and Clavis in the Chevrolet Corvette, 
Uh, GMS playing the Ferrari and Reno and Skittles in the 4 GT. And then there are some reserves. So, yeah, let's see. Okay. Everyone wanted the uh, Mercedes. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, let's, let's start. And I hope I know all the... Uh, the settings and camera points but yeah we will see uh let's just try for this first sprint race i think they had a quality before this um don't think i should commentate then on that one because i can't find it so let's go am i not allowed to see some lights okay and off we go and terry decided to just not take the start initially so he is gone from Paul and it's an amazing start by Reno who goes into the lead and holds off Dominic, yes he does, uh, in a fabulous car. I, I, I want to go to all the liveries but I don't think I have time for that. We will just do it through the season, you know. Um, so very good start by Reno um, and then the rest is following, I see. JB is still very close together with GMS. Uh, I think, wait a moment, I think I can have more settings, yes, yes, that's what we want, lovely, okay, so JMS made the move on Jamie, who is now under threat by Zach, who is being passed by Perry, who is coming back from taking the star two seconds <laughs> after everyone, um, and he's already back into P5. Some great liveries though. A lot of red and blue and pyro with a great start since he comes from P10. We are almost three white here with Zach staying in position. And I think, yeah, it's a very, very, very calm and collective lap one. It's also a big benefit on this, um, of this post race commentary that I can pause from any moment if I see something uh, that just caught my eye. Um, so let's see, everyone goes through here on the main straight. The teammates of Stefan and Boots get close to each other. Hapax on the inside. And there is another car wide. That was Pyro. Wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna test this out. Pyro, what did you do? <laughs> it's lovely, dude. Pyro just overshot the corner by a mile. Okay, yeah. <laughs> He's lucky he kept position though, or well, at least it, it it looks like he's going to keep position. However, they are now almost three wide, and it is Stefan with a run. And he's on the inside for the next corner. It's funny because we drove for the F1 sprint this track as well yesterday. And Pyro goes wide again. So, a little bit of a break, break issue so far. And Zach also is in a position to Moose King. Ah, oh, don't, don't, don't blame him that much. He's like, he already got a second now of a penalty, even though he just overshoots every corner he sees. Anyway, Reno is kind of checking out. Went a bit wide there. And this whole group of Dominic and JMS and JB and also Perry is also separated itself from the rest. It's weird that I don't see the gaps, right? Maybe someone can help me on that. Why do, do I don't see any gaps? Is that the negative side effect of having a... That's weird, right? Okay, we will see. Torino so with the fastest lap, at least he tracks that for me. Perry is closing in on JB, but can't make a move yet into turn one. And there is a move made in turn one by Jetta on Pyro, who had an incredible start and is now dropping further and further back to the rear of the field, even though that was a great comeback. And it looks like Samuels can be Skittles, because he's in a similar car as Reno. And he's now making the move on 11th, and in the background, P10 and Kicks. And yeah, some good battles here in the yeah, I want to say midfield. 
So the only one with problems? Oh, those two. Okay. Sure. So this is continuing for the next couple of times. And we see a penalty for Moose King. I, I don't, I'm not gonna like go back and see how everyone got their penalties though. That, that's not really my intention. I have no clue where the, ah, the penalty line is. But I have been helped by the game. So that is Moose King losing his car even before he, oh look out, <laughs> no. Wait, I have to see that again. <laughs> what the fuck? What was that? What happened? So he completely loses his out, loses it, and then he's gonna collect the next car, I think. And that's indeed how Pax is held up and being put to a stop, and then Pyro also has to stop. And Moose King is somewhere there, and is now very, very, very far away. So, a little bit of a problem there, and he was really, really unfortunate for Hapox, but luckily for him, Pyro was also held up, and even so much that he is being passed by Samus. I like this camera angle a lot more, by the way, because it always gives be an indication of where everyone is, but yeah, so Jezak remains in P11, let's see how it's up at the front, Reno it still has a gap, but I don't think the gap has increased over the last lap, the only thing that strikes me is that Perry is a little bit more back now, in P5, he was close to the rear of Jamie, and indeed he had a 32.9 against a 31.8 by JB, which is even the fastest lap of the race at the moment. But it looks a bit settled, however, Dominic is getting more and more pressure by JMS. And let's see if he can do something up the hill, on the big long straight. This is very good news for Reno. Oh, there's the penalty line, I saw it, yeah, like at that big acceleration point. It looked like JMS had to run, but now it looks like Jamie has more of a run. Maybe he can do something into turn one. Another fast lap, but Terry takes over the fastest lap while catching up, and Jamie on the inside. And he makes the move into the podium positions. Good stuff there. Stefan still in the middle of nowhere, Zach a little bit the same, Pyro has recovered from his breaking point issues and is now suddenly a 9 and everyone is a little bit apart except for Kicks and Key 10 still. So, and the other two are really far down, or not, yeah, not Ben, but Oric and of course Moose King, his race is kind of ruined. Oh, Pyro, don't do this again, please. Thank you. So, let's see. Uh, I think Perry has to... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fully back with this group. And is attending on a move on JMS. I can't see... Um, maybe someone can help me, but I can't see tires, right? I don't think it matters for now. Perry on the inside of the final corner. Which is not the usual place to overtake. But he takes over P4. And Stefan is actually on his way though. I think he's closing in. Maybe JMS can come back. This is all good for Reno. I don't even see him in the distance anymore. When I'm focused on these cars. So indeed. Who we'll put him in tier 4? I think he did it himself. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, that's a late move? No, he didn't went for it. It looked a little bit like that. But Perry indeed showing that he indeed has some pace. Since, well, Quali showed that, but I think he's already too far down now on Reno to do something in the remaining seven minutes. 
Let's see how it goes with the rest. They are still in... Oh, Pyro made a move. He has passed Hapax. So they are teammates though. So... Yeah. They're really showing themselves in the Mercedes. Oh. My bad. Let's... Let's see what uh, happens here. Because Perry up into P3, this is the Lewis Hamilton Albon corner. Um, I'm sure this has a name, but he makes the move stick question mark. Jamie's still on the inside though. Uh, Jamie is very close to these two, uh, but Perry makes the move and is up into P3 and can now chase down Dominic, who has been under pressure for the whole race, but hasn't lost a position since then. I think there's also, uh, it, it will be a hard time for Perry to actually break away from these guys. Great angle here in turn one. You see that Jamie makes a very good return in move for this final podium position. And this battling, it would be very good for Dominique if this keeps happening. Jamie going defensive, but still Perry wants to go for the inside, takes the inside, and now they are just switching away positions every corner. I'm very curious when indeed the momentum, and the momentum is there for JMS, the momentum is huge to be honest. The only issue is that he's on the outside, but he has a possibility of taking Jamie's place. But in the end it doesn't happen and he comes on the marbles and he has to watch out because a big gap has been closing down substantially by Stefan. And he has no pressure from behind so... In the end it looks like Perry has the move but I don't think you can rule out Jamie yet. Pyro has left Harpox a little bit. Still these guys are a bit close, but not super close though. Saladenga for Reno. Lovely Dutch uh, thingy on the uh, side wing. So, uh, JMS really had a poor exit I think. Um, and he also went wide in this corner in turn one and now he should feel the pressure of Stefan who immediately dives down the inside and he chooses to just take the flip through yeah that is a clever move uh, but can't return the move or he can no he can't so Stefan up into p5 showing really solid pace he just missed out in the first lap because he was close behind pyro I think and now the battle for P2 will really start, since I think this is the most pressure Dominic has had for the race. I'm really very curious how I would fare against these drivers. I'm not like the slowest in GT, but... It's interesting though. Jack is also closing in. There's a big gap behind him to Pyro, who is leading some sort of a second group. Useful camera angle here. And again, Kicks and Key 10 are close to each other. The Key 10 has a has a better exit there. Maybe he can do something. They have been close for like the entire race. And. He is alongside now, on the outside. And... Hello? Yes. Kix is still in 13th. Keeps the position. Ah, these two are also like uh, having fun at the back. A little bit unfortunate for Moose King. He had like a big moment. I think one of the biggest moments I've seen. Ah, uh, oh, oh no. What happened? I see Dominic with a penalty and Perry has passed him, so let's go into the flashback. 
Uh, that's uh, quite a dive. Yeah, and he's being hit though. He is being hit. It gets. Does he get a second for that? Oh, that's awful. That's absolutely. That's like. That's not even the biggest extension though. And he loses out not only by one place, but by two places since JB is opportunistic and benefits from the whole situation. And he has a penalty which will make him under pressure by Stefan. Oh, this has been a horrible uh, sequence of events for uh, Dominique. I don't think he will be happy with that, especially so close to the finish of the race. So. Oh, let's see how this deep acceleration will go. And let's see if Stefan can benefit from that. He will see this and he will think, ah, lovely. There he comes. Ah, okay, he's very, very keen on giving the room for someone that wants to dive down the inside. And JMS is gonna follow him through. And that's a trip from second to sixth in one lap. And not even because of her own mistake. That can be a penalty though, but... <laughs> if it is that, yeah, sure, fair play. Like. <laughs> so I am a little bit sad by the fact that I don't have gaps, but at least I have visual gaps and my brain is telling me he is not going to make that. The timer goes to the 15 minutes in 20 seconds and I am not sure that already means that this is the final lap. Could be, 10 laps, would be solid. That would be a great start of the season, nevertheless, for Reno. Yes, it is the final lap. So, let's come on board <laughs> with Reno for the final stretch to the finish line. A uh, remarkable great start of the season for him. He um, just made it all happen at the start benefited from that parry didn't start technically and went up the inside of Dominique and is winning the first race of season 10 in great fashion parry in second Jamie has a penalty in the end a 1.5 and it doesn't cost him since Stefan finishes in fourth Jamie is in fifth Dominique in sixth Zach Pyro Hapax Jezza side by side over the line but Ben takes 11th and then there was a problem in the last lap for Samaris which drops him down to 14th Oregon 15th and OJ Moose King I think he had another moment and that is being indicated by that 1 minute 49 lap so uh, fast lap to Perry though um, and this is the first print race, and now I will cut it out for a moment <laughs> um, to give you uh, the the main race, I think. Um, so be right back.